with John D.net. Just want to update you about that trade. Um, now, the trade closed a couple of days ago. I'm just not getting around to recording the video. And as you remember, or if you watched the last video, <clears throat> the GB, the pound dollar trade was going against me. And it did end up going back my direction and hitting my take profit target. So I want to show you that real quick. Oh, let me flip this around. Oops, I almost dropped the phone. Um, all right. So as you see, it was August 18th, the trade closed with a dollar, a dollar nine cent profit. It might be saying, "Well, that seems like a long time," or "That seems like." A lot of hassle just for a dollar nine cent profit well the idea the reason I'm starting with this small account is so that over time you can see this account grow because uh, this was this will prove that you know a lot of people when they start recording like trading videos whatever you time there's a lot of times they start out with a after they've already made a lot of money <laughs> And the problem I have with that is you don't know if they made their money from selling their course and then put it into a trading account or if they actually built an account from scratch, a scratch or from a, basically took a small account and grew it to a big account. So that's what I tend to show here. But like I said, so with trading, what I did to earn this dollar nine cent, I can do to make a hundred dollars and nine cent, or I can use to make a thousand dollars and nine cent. I can use to make ten thousand dollars and nine cent. What I just did is no different. Uh, it's the same strategy you would use to make that kind of money. What's different is how much money, how big your account is. So what determines how much money you make is how much how big your account is so this is a I think I started this account with like nine hundred maybe a thousand dollars I can't remember exactly but um, but you can start an account with ten grand a hundred grand and the more money you have the more you can uh, leverage or the more you can uh, more units you can buy so as you see at the, this first trade I bought 300 units and I was earning three cent per pip but as your account grows you can buy more units and you earn more per pip a pip is a price index point so I earned three cent per pip so if you were to do the math a dollar nine cent how many I'm not gonna do it on my top of my head One, zero, nine. So I earned thirty six pips. Or oh, uh, so imagine, like I said, you were earning a dollar per pip. That would be thirty six dollars. Or you were earning five dollars per pip. Oops, I'm all wrong. <laughs> 36 times one. All right, 36 times five. That'd be $180. If you were earning $10 per pip, that'd be $360. And <clears throat> what I'm saying is to do that, the strategy doesn't change. All that change is how much you're leveraging or how much you are putting on that in that trade that's it so what i'm doing now to make let's say a dollar nine cent over the course of a week i can use to make a thousand dollars ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars over the course of a week not taking any longer not doing any more work 
is just growing your account to the point where you can do that. So that's why a lot of people uh, fail at Forex because it takes so long to get a, to grow their account big enough to where they can actually make any decent money. So let's just go through here real quick and see if there's any opportunities. Now, a lot of people say don't get into a trade on a Friday. I don't listen to what most people say I don't listen to. That's why I, but what a lot of people say you should do or shouldn't do, like never, never uh, get into a trade over the weekend. Uh, don't hold a trade over the weekend. Don't uh, trade on a Sunday night. Don't don't trade on a Monday morning. Uh, don't trade without a stop loss. Uh, don't leverage more than one percent of your account. Uh, all those things I, I don't listen to because, well, I'm not saying it's not good advice, but it's just not the advice I follow. And like I said, I've never had any issues uh, getting into, you know, making money by doing it the way I do it. So. If you watch the first video, what we're looking for is for either all the green candles on the hourly, four hour, and daily chart. So the, let's let's look at this RC dollar yen. So we got so the last bar is red. So what we're looking for. In the four hour chart is for that to match. The last bar is red. What we're looking for on the one hour chart is for that to match. You see that last bar is green. So that's a trade we won't will not enter. The Euro yen. Last bar red. Last bar red on the four hour chart. Last bar is red on the hourly chart. Now the, what we look for is for the EMA, which is this orange line. The color of the line isn't uh, important because you can make that line any color, but in, in my example, it's the orange line. We're looking for that to be above the red candle, which it is. Now we're looking for confirmation. So if you look at the CCI, which is this bottom graph or this bottom line chart, the the spike is so deep that I would not enter this trade because that means that, well, to me, that doesn't make me feel confident that the trade, there's a chance this trade will go the other direction because how, how oversold, yeah, oversold these, this trade is because of how deep that is, that purple area at the bottom and how deep the MACD, which is the middle graph, how uh, deep that is. But I will check to look at the weekly chart just to see where's, where are things actually going. <clears throat> so as you see that over the course of a week, the trade is going up so that confirms what my thought was is that this is just a big spike and someone you know a lot of sell going on selling going on and this will pretty much probably go the other direction probably by the end of the day so i won't get in that trade is a euro dollar <clears throat> and We have the red bar, the last bar is red, last bar is red, last <clears throat> last bar is red. This is this also this has been on an uptrend and over the past couple of months. So there's a chance that this is just going sideways for what they call consolidating and will continue the uptrend. So I will stay out of that trade. And I actually put an alert on this trade, I mean not trade, this pair 
for when it does go the other direction. It's the yellow line, I think. Blue line. One of those lines. So, <clears throat> let's, let's see what we have here. So, we have a green bar. But we have a red bar, so there's no reason to even look any further because it's already showing us that it's not ready for us to get into. So let's see what else we have. <clears throat> this is a dollar yen, red bar, red, green. So that's a trade we won't get into. But there's a chance that this will go out back the other way. Let's see what the as you see on the weekly chart, the trend is down. And the trend is down on the monthly chart. So what I might, what I will do here is put an alert for when this trade starts to go the direction I'm wanting to go. So, <clears throat> put it about right there and this will send me an alert saying that you know the trade is starting to go back the other way or the I can't say trade <laughs> the pair is starting to go the other way and I'll go look at it and see where it's at and keep an eye on it after the alert to see if there's, see if there's opportunity to get in alright <clears throat> now there's way more pairs than this this is just the ones I focus on you don't have to focus on any of these. You can, you know, most people tend to start with a euro dollar trade. I mean, euro dollar pair. But, you know, over time you'll you'll get a knack for you'll grow to like a certain pair over the other. So the last bar here is green. Not a lot of activity. Red. Uh, and then green so <clears throat> there's no opportunities right now there might be something later today but I really just wanted to update you on where the uh, what happened to that one trade where it was going against me and like I said I was very confident that it was going to go back my direction which it did that's why I held on to it so like I said mindset is key to being a successful trader being confident in your strategy is the next key and the other key is being consistent so that's it for this video hope you got some value out of it if you want to work close with me and learn more about me you can go to workwithjohnd.net or you can follow me on instagram facebook at john dorsey 3 so that's it for this video hope you got some value out of it talk to you again soon